It's amazing how many properties, laws, theorems cross all sorts of areas of mathematics. Take, for example, the commutative, associative, and distributive laws. They pop up in algebra, set theory, vector arithmetic, some operations in matrices, and as we're about to see, propositional logic. <laughs> Proving laws in propositional logic takes only a truth table. Let's do something really simple. First of all, we've got this idea of complementation. All right, and so we could say the complementation law. Let's do it. If I have P, some sort of a proposition P can be true or false, take the complement of it, and then take the complement of it again, what is it equal? Well, probably you're ahead of me. It equals P, right? Now, before I put down an equal sign, let's talk about a new symbol here. Whenever you're talking about logical equivalence, typically after going through a proof, and usually the proof starts out by saying, uh, something, if and only if, something else. And if we have proven that it is a tautology, I will talk a little bit more about that in the next lesson. If we've proven that it is so for every possible case, we have a logical equivalence. A logical equivalence is represented with those three lines instead of the two lines that you're used to seeing with an equal sign. So how do we prove this guy? Well, the way we prove this guy is we talk about P how many possible cases can we have? It's either false or true, and the negation of P takes the false, turns it to a true, takes the true, turns it to a false. What happens if we negate this again? Well, we take the true, we turn it to a false, we take the false, we turn it to a true. Now let's move on to some of those other common laws that you've seen before. How about the commutative law? Well, the commutative law says that, and then we'll, we'll start out, because we're going to do both the and and the or. We've got P or Q is logically equivalent to Q or P. How do we prove that? We prove it with the truth table, right? And the way it works is that the or operation is only false if all of the propositions that are being ORed together are false. That's the only case. So we'd have false or false generates a false, false or false generates a false. Any other case, you've got true and true on both sides of that logical equivalence. Turns out we have a similar law for the and, the and of the propositions P and Q is equal to the compound, uh, compound proposition P, excuse me, Q and P. Now, for this case, the only time that we get a false, excuse me, the only time we get a true for P and Q is if both of them are true, and that's the same on both sides of that, equals, of that equivalent sign. Now, we've got the associative law. And the associative law works like this. If you have three things that are being combined with a single operation, so I have P or Q or R, it doesn't matter whether I combine P or Q first or if I combine Q or R first. The order what we combine those together doesn't matter. This is also true if we are combining P and Q and R using the AND operation. So P ANDed with Q and R is the same thing as P ANDed with Q, then ANDed with R. All right. Now, where things get a little funny, something that may look unfamiliar to you, especially if you've only had experience with the algebra, is the distributive law works a little differently. And when I say the distributive law works a little differently, whenever we're talking about mathematics, you've probably seen that, say, A times B plus C works like this. It becomes A times B plus A times C. That works, right? Those two are equal. But if we have have a plus b times c, you can't distribute the a plus to b and c. This is not equal to a plus b times a plus c. This is not the case. But it turns out that in logic, we can't actually swap back and forth the ands and the ors in the distributive law. So let's take a look at that. It takes three, or excuse me, it takes two different forms. We've got P anded with Q 
or R, and that's equal to P and Q, ORed with P and R. All right? And P ORed with Q and R is equal to P ORed with Q, then ended with P or R. Now, does this make sense? And in fact, you should have, I wish somebody had told me that I'd stop using my equivalent signs and shifted to equal signs. Hey, old habits are hard to break. But anyway, next time, tell me. Anyway, let's take a look at this bottom one. This bottom one is kind of like the P plus Q times R. Let's see if that works in the truth table. So what we're saying is we have P, Q, and R. And if we look at the truth table, what we get is, well, we have three different propositions here. How many combinations of trues and false can we have with three propositions? Well, there are eight, two to the three, possible ways to make trues and false or assign trues and false to these three propositions. Half of them are going to be false for P. Half of them are going to be true for P. Q. We have two falses, two trues, two falses, two trues. And then R, we alternate false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. And this will give us every possible combination of true and false for these three propositions. Now, what we had with our expression was that P ORed with Q and R is equal to P or Q, then ended with P or R. Now, as you know, we're supposed to do what's inside the parentheses first. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's take, uh, let's do Q and R first. So we have Q and R. All right, this is our column for that. And so the only time we're going to have a true in this column is when both Q and R are true. And that happens in the fourth row and in the eighth row. Everywhere else, we have at least one false going into that compound proposition. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take P and OR it with Q and R. So this is going to take this column right here and OR it with this column. And what you're looking for is if either one has a true, then we're going to have a true in the column. And that's going to result, and I forgot it, you all aren't helping me out here. I got to have that three, three dashes there. All right, so we have false or false is false, false or false is false. False or false is false. False or true is true. And then for the last four, P is true for all, th all four of them. So we're going to always have a true or whatever the rest is for that expression. So that's always going to be true for those last four rows. So what we've got is three rows with falses, five rows with trues. Now let's work on these two guys. First of all, what is P ORed with Q? That is going to be P or Q. That's going to be this, these two columns being ORed together. And so what we have is false or false is false. False or false is false. False or true is true. False or true is true. And then true or false, true, 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 true for all of those guys, right? So that, that column represents P or Q. Now let's take a look at what P or R is. Well, that is going to be the first column ORed with the third column. And if you follow down through here, you're looking for the OR. So if there's a TRUE in either column, we're going to have a TRUE. Remember, that unique case, the only unique case we've got is if they're both false. So we have two falses there. There's a false. We have two falses also in the third row, but every one of these other rows has at least one true. So we have false or true is true, false or true is true, true or false, and all the way down, right? So we have at least one true in one of those columns. And what we've got for P or R is a false in the first row, a false in the third row, trues everywhere else. Now, the last step is to take this this term, P or Q, and OR it with P or R. So we've got P or Q, parentheses, ANDED with P or R. 
And that's the end of these two columns, these last two columns. What does that look like? Well, if you've got an in, in a false in either of the columns, you're going to have a false on the output. The only time that we're going to have a true as a result of that compound expression is if both of these columns have trues. So we have false, 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 true, 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 true. All right. All right. Now, real quick, let's do something here. Um, and this is going to, we're going to go into this more in the next lesson, but Whenever it comes to figuring out whether there's this equal sign, this, this illogical equality actually is, uh, it's, it's just simply a way to denote that the if and only if has been proven to be a tautology. Now I'm going to identify this column as S and this column as T. And so this last column, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say S if and only if t, all right? And so remember, the if and only if, it was looking for equality. You had a true result for this column if both columns had false or if both columns had true. If one was true and one was false, the result was going to be false. So we have false, false, that's true. False, false, that's true. False, false, that's true. Sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? False, false, that's true. But anyway, it's showing equality. True, true, that's true. True, true, that's true. True, true, it's true, 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 true. All right? And you'll see that every single row, for every single row, this compound proposition right here is true for everything. And that is our tautology. And if you've shown that for an if and only if you've got a tautology, this becomes the logical equivalence. Now, what I'm going to do is create a summary of some other laws. All right, and when I say a summary of other laws, this is really about taking a single proposition and combining it with some either itself or what I would refer to as a constant, as a true or a false, something that is something that doesn't change, right? And so what we've got here is the or operation and then the and operation. Remember, the and is the caret, the or is the little v. And I'm going to make a table here that represents all the different things that we can combine this with without adding or introducing another proposition. So let's make a table and we'll make it, let's see, we'll make it have four columns. All right. Now, with every one of these columns, let's, let's start, start with the first one. What I want to do is I want to see what happens when I combine something. And when I say something, I'm going to just use the generic proposition P. Now, P could represent a compound proposition or just a single atomic proposition. But what happens whenever I combine P with a true? So that would be P or T. What is that equal to? Or how about P and T? What is that equal to? And what happens whenever I combine a proposition with a false? And that would be P or F, or P and F, all right? Then we could also combine it with, um, with itself in some way. So we can combine it with itself. That would be P or P is equal to, or P and P is equal to. And then I can also combine P with its complement. All right, the negation of P. So that would be P or not P, and P and not P. What are those two equal to? Now we can prove each one of these with a simple truth table. So I have P as the input, and in fact, P is the only input I've got for all of these, uh, all of these different uh, proposed propositions. And P can take on a value of either false or true. Now, whenever I'm looking at, for example, P ORed with true, what do we have? Well, with the OR operation, remember that if either one of them is a true, the result is going to be a true. So we're going to have false or true equal to true. 
and true or true equal to true. So it looks like regardless of what we've got P equal to, anytime you or something with a true, you're going to have a true. Is that hold true whenever, <laughs> no pun intended, does that hold true whenever we change that operation to an and? So P and true. Well, remember true has, the and has to have both uh, propositions true before it'll result in a true. So we have false and true is equal to a false. True and true is equal to a true. So it just so happens that on both sides and both of these columns, these match up. And so what we've got is anytime I and something and a proposition with true, it's the original proposition. Now, how does this work whenever it comes to the false? Well, if I take P or false, false or false, that's the unique case whenever we're outputting a false from this expression or this proposition. And then we have true or false, that's equal to a true. And so whenever you're oring something with a false, the result comes back always as equal to P. Now, something I'd like for you to see here is that these two right here, both of those expressions, P ended with true is equal to P, and P ORed with false is equal to P. These two right here are referred to as the identity laws. All right. Now let's take a look and see what happens whenever we and something with a false. When you and something with a false, well, false and false, false, true and false, they're not both true, so that's also false. And we end up with anything being anded with a false is equal to false, which results in two other types of, of uh, properties or laws. These two right here, these two are referred to as the domination or sometimes the annulment laws. What does that mean? It basically means that the, whatever we're combining it with, in the case of the or, it's a true. In the case of the and, it's a false. Whatever we're combining it with gets rid of the proposition, completely annuls that proposition. And so what we've got is the true or the false that canceled out the, pro the proposition. Let's take a look at the last two columns. So what happens whenever I or something with itself? Well, this becomes false or false, which is false, and true or true, which is a true. So when I combine using the or something with itself, it just becomes itself. Whenever I combine something with itself using the and, turns out we've got the same situation. Just go ahead and write the truth table. False and false is false, true and true is true, which means that something anded with itself is also itself. Now these two also have a special name. These are referred to as the idempotent laws. Now let's look at the last column. The last column says, what happens whenever I combine something with its inverse? Let's begin with the or. So I've got or, the, the proposition P, or with the complement of P. So this becomes false or true, which is equal to true. And then for when the proposition is true, we have true or false, which is also true. Which means that regardless of the setting of that proposition, Anything ORed with its complement is always going to be true. Now what happens whenever you combine a proposition using the AND with its complement? Now you're going to have false for whenever the proposition is a false. You have false AND true, which is false. Remember, they both have to be true. And then for when the proposition is true, you have true AND false, which is false. 
So that means that regardless of the value of that proposition, whether it's true or false, if you're combining it with its complement, the result is always going to be false. And guess what? These last two also have a name. These guys are referred to as the complement laws. All right. And what we can do is we can use these laws in order to simplify or come up with new propositions. Let's talk about one more set of laws. We'll talk about De Morgan's laws. Now, De Morgan's laws, well, for those of you who are not familiar with logic operations and only have a background of an arithmetic, these seem uncomfortable at first. You'll get used to it after you start applying it a lot, but when you first get introduced to these, they don't make sense. The reason is, is because if you're used to arithmetic and you're doing something like a plus b and then you take the negative of that, you distribute that negative, right? So it becomes negative a plus negative b, right? You can distribute that. But the same thing doesn't apply to multiplication, does it? If you've got a times b and you take the negative of that, that really just ends up being something like negative a times b or maybe a times b negative b. Only one of the terms gets that negative sign. Well, since this doesn't operate exactly the same, I'm going to give you an even different way to view the distribution of a negation. And please understand, whenever I'm talking about negation in logic, that's a little different than negation in arithmetic. But let's go ahead and do the examples. If I have the negation of p or q, turns out that I can distribute the negation to P and Q. So I've got negation of P and the negation of Q. That's fine. That's exactly the way we want to do it. Similar to addition, right? The problem is, is that this operation doesn't stay an or. It's almost as if the negation applies itself to the operation and turns the or into an and. Similarly, if I have the negation of P and Q, then I distribute the negation to P and I distribute the negation to Q and the AND turns to an OR. Now I didn't just make this stuff up, I used a truth table to figure out if this was true or not. Let's just pick one of these. If I've got P and Q, that means that I have four possible combinations of trues and falses for P and Q. Now let's take this top one here. What is P ORed with Q? Well, P ORed with Q, remember, anytime we have a true as either proposition P or proposition Q is a true, then, we res then the result of the compound uh, proposition is a true, and we have a false only if the compound proposition is false ORed with false. All right? Now, we do the not of that. We negate that guy. And so the negation of P or Q is just everywhere there's a false we have a true on the negation, and then anywhere P or Q is a true, we have a false on its negation. Now, let's do one more column, or actually a couple more columns, and we'll do P, the, the negation of P and the negation of Q. And so I'm really just, everywhere there's a false, there's gonna be a true over here. Everywhere there's a true, there's gonna be a false. So we're gonna get true, true, false, false for P, and true, false, true, false for Q. What happens now whenever we take the negation of P and we and it with the negation of Q? That's going to give us true and true is true, True and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false. And what you see is that this column right here is equivalent to this column right here. True, true, and then false, 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 false. All right? And if we did it using the, the uh, you know, starting out with the if and only if, and then showed that this and this, so I could do something like this. Let's, I don't know that I have a whole lot more room here, but if I have this guy as, uh, this guy right here is proposition R, this guy is proposition S, do I have R if and only if S? And I have true, true, that's equal. 
false, false, that's equal, false, false, that's equal, false, false, that's equal. This guy is our friend, the tautology, right? And there you go. We've proved the equivalence, the logical equivalence. Now, a couple other things. First of all, I've talked about tautology. What I haven't talked about is something called a contradiction. Now, a contradiction says I have all falses in a column. So all falses in a column, after you go through the, the process of generating the compound, uh, the truth table for the compound proposition, if it results in all falses, that is something called a contradiction. I haven't shown any of those today, but I have shown something called a contingency. Now, a contingency means that there's, it's neither a tautology nor is it a contradiction. There's a combination of trues and falses in a single column. In our next lesson, we're going to dig into some more complicated truth tables in order to show more logical equivalences.